Hello, beloved. In our reading today, we hear of the resurrection of Jesus and his appearance to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Saturday of the week of Pentecost, June 3rd, 2023. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 25, beginning at verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 497 from Lutheran Service Book, Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, with all your graces now outpoured on each believer's mind and heart. Your fervent love to them impart. Lord, by the brightness of your light, in holy faith your church unite. From every land and every tongue, this to your praise, O Lord, our God, be sung. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, holy light, guide divine, now cause the word of life to shine. Teach us to know our God aright. And call him Father with delight. From every error keep us free. Let none but Christ our Master be. That we in living faith abide. In him our Lord with all our might confide. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, holy fire, come for true. Grant us the will your work to do, 
and in your service to abide. Let trials turn us not aside. Lord, by your power prepare each heart, and to our weakness strength impart, that bravely here we may contend. Through life and death to you, our Lord, ascend. Alleluia, alleluia. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden, that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which had said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we read from Luther's Family Devotions, translated by Joel Baisley. And when he has released his sheep, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow after him, for they know his voice. John 10, verse 4. This going out, as I have touched on before, is Christian freedom. Christians are now free and no longer confined and imprisoned as before under the terrible compulsion and fear of the law and divine judgment. Rather, under Christ's sweet kingdom of grace, they are happily pastured and fed. As St. Paul says of it in Romans 6, verse 14, you are no longer under the law but under grace. Or in Galatians 3.25, Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the taskmaster. This is not the kind of freedom where the sheep now can run from their shepherd without protection or protector into error as they would do of themselves. Nor can a Christian do everything that his flesh desires. Rather, now they are protected from the error and fear of the wolf, the thief, and the murderer. They go under their dear shepherd and follow with desire and love as he leads and drives them, since they know that he goes ahead of them and rules kindly, so that they can no longer become guilty or condemned by the law, even if they also have not completely fulfilled the law due to the weakness of their flesh. So, since the Lord and God's Son, the Shepherd, is there, who has called his sheep under his grace, shelter, and protection, then whoever would accuse or condemn his lamb must first do it to Christ himself. As St. Paul says wonderfully and defiantly in Romans 8, verse 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Or in verses 33 and 34, who will accuse the elect of God? God is here, who makes you just. Who will condemn you? Christ is here, who has died and is risen, who sits at the right hand of God and goes ahead of us. 
I say that is the freedom of the conscience from the condemnation of the law, which has no claim on us since we are in Christ. For the outward bodily life does not belong here under such freedom, but it has its external rule and law that doesn't spoil the spiritual nature of freedom in Christ. Lord, thou fount of joy forever, thou art mine, I am thine. No one can us sever, I am thine, because thou gavest life and blood for my good, by thy death me savest. Amen. Please join me as we conclude with Luther's morning prayer. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.